No! Oh, tofu. <laughs> I see before what you do with tofu. Stay away tofu from tofu. Out. Jamie, stay away from tofu, please. I don't want you to... I don't want to see you handling tofu again. And there you go, guys. Thai green curry. Jamie style. Really, really nice. If you want the recipe, click... Uh, on the details below. No thanks. Oh, cool. Chef Brian Sow here, not your typical chef. And today I'm gonna be reacting to Uncle Roger hate Jamie Oliver Thai green curry. Here we go again. If you're new to the channel, I am a professional chef with 17 years of experience. I've defeated Bobby Flay on the Food Network show, beat Bobby Flay, as well as run the world-renowned kitchen of Beauty in Essex located right here in New York City. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for your continued support. And lastly, do me a favor and follow Mission Sandwich on Instagram, it is the official account of my brand spanking new sandwich shop opening here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. The views and opinions expressed in this video are exactly that. They're just my views and opinions based on my experience as a culinary professional, but I don't always get it right. So if I said something wrong or you have something to add, please let me know in the comments below because I'd love to learn more. And with that said, let's see how bad Jamie Oliver messes up Asian food on this episode. Delicious. No, oh, no, 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 no. That's a lot of, that's a lot of mushroom and we are two seconds into the video. <laughs> Hello. Oh. This not how you make green curry, hiya. So, so much disappointment. <laughs> Mr. Chili Jam, aka Jamie <laughs> Olive Oil. He disappoint Uncle Roger so many times now. How his Thai green curry yeah. gonna be? Subscribe. Well, um, I'm already not really looking forward to this. Uh, you know, Jamie Oliver, you know, clearly has this business empire of restaurants. And I'm sure he's great with his Western cookery. I really am not familiar with his product. I do believe in him trying to make, you know, have better uh, food in schools. That's about the extent I know, but man, he's really screwed up a lot of Asian dishes. Let's, let's keep watching though. <sighs> I don't like what I saw in that in that photo whatsoever that is one of the most anemic green curries i've ever seen let's keep watching guys we're gonna make thai green curry it's delicious fragrant my family love it we're gonna go one cup of rice that's enough for four people one cup he's finally making his own rice i wonder if this video came out after the egg fried rice video and he probably got shit on so hard for using pre-packaged rice i get it it was probably for a middle class audience that doesn't have too much cooking experience regardless you should know how to cook your rice because if you don't know how to cook rice you should be ashamed of yourself that's right i'm shaming you for not knowing how to make rice be ashamed rice for four people is your whole family just baby but hiya that like five grain of rice each you <laughs> Starving your children. That's not true. The rice is going to, you know, bare minimum, two to three times in volume. Uh, it's absorbing all that water. It fluffs up, and you're also having it with curry. A little light for four people, I would say that, but also, uh, well, he, Nigel's in the UK too. Yeah, I mean, American portions are way oversized anyway. So, yeah, we should be consuming slightly less food. Slightly. Eight seconds in, already make mistake. Peter, you same boat of fucking up. <laughs> I mean, two cups of water. This is the perfect equation for the perfect. How much water? And he's using pre-boiled water. Okay. And then two cups of water. Two cups of water. So one cup of, basically he's doing a two to one ratio. For long grain rice, that is wrong. It's gonna be too wet. I would not do that for long grain rice, which um, I couldn't really see what kind of rice he used. I'm gonna assume it was long grain rice. For long grain rice, I like to go like 1.75 to one. I know it's much more nitpickier, but the product will come out perfectly. However, in many Asian households, they use the finger um, the finger method. Let's talk about the finger technique. You have your rice cooker, it's in this pot, or it doesn't even have to be a rice cooker, it can be on the stove top. You rinse off the rice, you have to do it a few times to remove the excess starch. You put enough water so that when you insert your finger, the water goes up to the line of your first knuckle. So your finger sits on top of the rice, not into the rice. However, this is a little flawed. If you have a big ass hand like me and a big middle finger like I do, I know that I have to do it a little above my 
fingernail. Someone who's smaller, a very petite person, may need to go over that knuckle. It's one of those feel things and you learn it as you do it more. I generally say two parts water to one part rice, but go a little below two. That's the rule of thumb. It changes with the type of rice. If it's like a wild grain rice, it's gonna be a ton more water. Short grain rice, it's gonna be slightly less. Finger thing is tested and true, but it also depends on the size of your finger. 99% of Asian households, that's exactly how they're cooking their rice. For me, as far as like literal ratios, measurements, I do 1.75 to one long grain rice. No, I'm sorry, water to long grain rice. Now, what concerns me is he's using boiled, already hot water. You know, I've never seen anyone do it that way and I've never done it myself. So I can't tell you what is going to go wrong. My assumption of what is actually gonna go wrong is that the cooking process is gonna start once that hot boiling water goes onto the rice, it's gonna pre-cook the outside. And by the time the inside gets cooked, the outside's gonna be mushy. The best way to make rice is actually to soak your water overnight. And that will actually give you the best product. So what you do is you clean the rice and you measure the water, whether it's the finger test or the actual water, let it sit overnight. And at my old restaurant, the first rice of the day was always the best rice because the night before we actually wash it, we let it sit in the rice cooker. And then when we get there in the morning, right before the lunch shift, then we start to cook the rice and the rice comes out. I mean, it's it's that 1%, it's that law of diminishing returns, but for me, it's absolutely worth it if I've thought prepared properly and thought of it ahead of time. This is the perfect equation. No, for no it's not. Depends what rice, let's remember that. Perfect fluffy rice, a pinch of salt, lid on top, medium heat. Never uh, Asian cookery, I've never seen uh, rice salted. Very common for Western cookery though. So I'm not gonna knock him for that because he is a Western, you know, Western style chef or cook. Some people argue if he's a chef or not, you know what I mean? Peel, a thumb sized piece of ginger, that we're gonna go in with your thumbs. He should be using galangal if he really wanted to make this authentic. We saw galangal in the Gordon Ramsay video. It's a varietal, like it's in the same family of ginger, but it's completely different flavor wise. I had a hard time describing it, but I recently had some. So the way I can describe it is, Whereas ginger is like spicy, galangal still has that sharpness as far as like the flavor profile, almost that like little jump when it hits your tongue. But it's also a little bit more citrusy and at the same time, earthy. Very unique and indigenous ingredient to Southeast Asia. And if you wanna make really authentic curry, you should be using galangal. Your regular supermarket for a non-Asian heavy area, they're probably not gonna find, that you're not gonna find galangal. But it is not the same thing. If you can and you decide to go with this recipe, which I haven't seen it yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna like it, try to get galangal. Galangal, nobody yeah. use ginger for Thai green curry, nobody. In to processor. the food okay. processor. <sighs> food processor. Use your pestle and mortar, where is it? Niece and nephew, food processor, not replacement for pestle and mortar. Because food processor just slice shit up, pestle and mortar can do Uncle Roger's favorite thing, pounding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're working in the professional kitchen setting, I have never worked in a Thai kitchen. I've never even been into a Thai kitchen, okay? So take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. I have very minimal Thai cookery knowledge. I know some basics like a green curry and that's pretty much the extent of it with that said if i if this was me and remember i'm a western trained chef if i had to prep uh in-house made green curry paste i would do it with a food processor i'm not going to pay somebody to pestle and mortar because i don't use illegal labor and or underpay my staff where i can get someone a pestle and mortar uh you know tons of green curry paste for hundreds of customers all day you know all day long the most efficient way is to use the machinery guarantee you you're going to get a better product a more authentic product with the pestle and mortar but professional restaurant setting Definitely, I would have used. I would use a food processor, no problem. Getting ready for the internet to shit all over me for that one. Bring out all the flavor. Maybe that' why Auntie Helen pounds so many other people. <laughs> Into the food processor. Then we're gonna go in with the lemongrass. Now I need to spank it. No, no, it. no. Now I need. To I do agree, beating it a little bit will re release some of the oils found in there, make it a little bit aromatic, but if you're already gonna put it into a food processor, that's just a step for show. Spanking not gonna do anything, 
you're gonna throw it all in food processor anyway. It's spinning at 9,000 RPM. If you spank harder than food processor, then I feel bad for Mrs. Oliver. <laughs> Sorry, Jamie's children. And then this part, I'm just gonna break that up. Yes, okay, so you wanna use the base end and you wanna peel, I, I don't know if he took the outer peels, but you want to take the outer peel off. That's really tough. And generally, even though I'm putting it into a food processor, processor, when I work with lemongrass, it is so fibrous. I still chop it up bare minimum, you know, half inch to, you know, third inch pieces. Cause like I said, it's tough, it's fibrous and you don't want long fibers in there. It almost looks like hair. It's not pleasant. We put that in four cloves of garlic. Garlic, good. Lots and of garlic. Six great. leaves of kaffir lime. Kaffir lime, kaffir lime okay. leaf, great. Of cumin, beautiful. Uh, he's using cumin powder. Uh, and I assume it's cumin powder because he was going like this. I would have used whole cumin and toasted it and actually pestle and mortared that along with some other dried spices like uh, coriander, whole cumin, and I think white pepper. And I was about to say fennel, but I don't think so. Honestly, I don't remember. It's been so damn long. Little green chilies here okay oh, green chili who is that <laughs> see i think that jamie white is running away that. from spanking out with the seeds i'm gonna go mm. for three what all right i would have put in a lot more chili myself if you're making this for uh, an audience that if you're making this curry for an audience that can't tolerate that much spice you know, I would have maybe replaced used some long green chilies that's a little bit more milder in spice, along with the Thai chilies. But if you're making this authentic, dude, they load that Thai chili in there like crazy. I have cousins that grew up in Thailand um, who I'm pretty close with to this day, and I've gone with them to eat Thai food. And, <laughs> and I'm being all Mr. Tough Guy, like, yeah, I'm half Korean. We eat spicy food. No, 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 no. This is a completely different type of spice. I had them order Thai spice. Dude, we had that food 10 minutes in. I, I must have pounded like 12 beers, ton of water, eating nothing but rice because my mouth is completely on fire. Keep in mind, I do like spicy food and I could not handle it. Went home, woke up in the middle of the night in terrible, absolute terrible pain. And then I passed out and I woke up to birds chirping and sunlight coming into my apartment. And I am still sitting on the toilet, pants down around my ankles. Tree, yeah, a little weak. Just, just tree, <laughs> just tree chili for your curry. Hi, uh... Out with the seeds, I'm gonna go for three. Kept Uncle seeds. Roger making Thai green curry for four people. I gonna use like 20 or 30 chili, but he used three that less than one chili per person. Why even bother with the chili? This is not gonna be curry, this is gonna be smoothie. Hiya. Not enough chili. Uncle Roger predict your green curry not even gonna have green color. Keep Good watching me, see point. if yep. Uncle Roger prediction correct. That's probably why the curry at the beginning of the video looks so anemic. He simply didn't put in enough and that's where a lot of the color's coming from. Good point, very good point. Two shallots. That's okay. okay. Shallots, down Any with that. Shallot. Nice bunch of coriander. So it's Too much coriander. Uh, in, in, uh, in the US, we call it cilantro. All right, some cilantro in there. I, uh... Uncle Roger's saying that it's too much cilantro. If I were to make it, again, knowing you guys remember, I'm not very experienced in Thai cookery. I would have put in about that amount. Uh, I think that's okay. Let's see how it goes though. I definitely feel like he should have used more dried spices, toasted it and um, ground it, whether he's using a spice grinder or pestle and mortar. I feel like he just did not, simply did not put in enough, put enough of those dried spices in his curry paste at all. Wait, wait. Yeah, so this is looking more like chopped up veg. Pestle and mortar will definitely give you a, well, he could put in more liquid and he would, blend it more, you know, like some shrimp paste. Uh, that would definitely homogenize it a lot better so that uh, it's a smoother product. And because the shrimp paste will be in there, it'll almost act as a lubricant and allow you to chop up chop up all those bits a lot smaller. That your paste, that all the ingredient for your paste, no galangal, no yeah. white peppercorn. Oh, okay. So uh, I guess I guess I was right about the white pepper. Shrimp paste. Ah, okay, sweet. I was right about the that shrimp paste. That little sprinkle of cumin not gonna do shit. Yeah, yeah, this yeah exactly. This gonna be so weak. So, so weak. weak. <laughs> and then a tablespoon of ground oil into the pan. It's fairly hot. 
I'm going to go in with 750 grams of chicken. Mm. Also, the chicken thigh. This is a very Western thing where you sear off your meat beforehand. Um, not as com uh, definitely happens in Asian cookery, but actually not as common, it, especially in Southeast Asian cooking. As far as my experiences with it goes, typically they will cook it with the paste and or dry spices and and like sear it then and it accomplishes two things it it makes the dried ingredients or the paste much more aromatic condenses its flavor but it also kind of like glues it into the protein that's typically how i've seen it done i could excuse me i could be wrong let me know in the comments if you can add to that and elaborate more as far as i remember when i last made thai green curry you do the coconut milk first until it breaks mean, meaning the coconut milk solids and the oil and the fat sep actually separates and it almost looks greasy and shiny that's actually desired and then you put in your paste and then and then you would put in your protein and cook it up but you know obviously he's not doing that here yeah so we'll fry this off eight minutes in a hot no no higher no no metal spoon on non-stick pan that's not even the biggest <laughs> crime in this picture you're not supposed to fry chicken like this for green curry okay Hiya. cool right on you need to mix the chicken with the paste and then okay, stir cool. fry it together jamie right. oliver haven't get one thing right so far you're just making chicken stir fry now <laughs> and earlier you would make smoothie he making every other food except green curry what crazy thing he gonna do next Mm. In the sink markets today, you can get a whole bunch of different mushrooms. We've got a no what? king oysters here, but you get those little mixed packs. Nobody put mushroom. Mm. <laughs> I would agree with that. Oh. I would agree with that. I, you know, I, I've definitely been to like generic Thai restaurants in New York. Well, they'll they they will put in a little bit of mushroom. I think that has to do more with they are catering for their local audience who would want that. But as far as like real authentic Thai green curry, I've never seen it. Like when I go to the real authentic spots, I've never seen mushrooms like that. And he's got some enoki mushrooms in there. The, the other smaller, the brown smaller ones, um, I, I think there's another name for it, but I call it shimeje. I think there's an English word for it. I just don't remember off the top of my head. And then there's uh, king oyster mushrooms. They're delicious. Uh, they're absolutely good, but they also have so much distinct flavor. I don't think that works with Thai green curry, personally. Also, I kind of have this feeling he was in the supermarket or his assistant was at the supermarket. like, these are all Asian. This is all Asian shit. It'll work great in an Asian dish, much like his ramen and his freaking uh, fried rice video. It's just like fucking mishmash of a ton of um, Asian, random ass Asian ingredients. Anyway, let's keep watching. Of, uh, Asian. 400, 400 <laughs> gram. Oriental mushrooms, quarter some. We can some leave these in and there. just break them up. Into this much mushroom, and he used three chili. Now he making mushroom soup high. <laughs> Too much mushroom. Who gonna eat this much mushroom in one meal? Uh, I, I agree. I think if you put in a couple pieces, maybe just the king oyster or just the cremini or just a few pieces of the uh, of the enoki at the very end. All right, you know, sure. But you're making mushroom curry now or what you think is curry. Jamie, just because you put in enoki mushroom, it don't make this dish any more Asian. <laughs> this curry is so white, it about to book spa holiday. Little wads, look how amazing <laughs> that is. So I'm just gonna push the chicken to one side. Don't push to one side, mm. throw it out and start all the mushrooms. <laughs> loads of texture, loads of different oh. shapes. Look at that mushroom, that big ass piece of mushroom. <laughs> Who want to eat that in your curry? One big blob of mushroom get in your mouth. And when you cook mushroom, all the water from mushroom come out. So this dish not even gonna taste like green curry. It gonna taste like mushroom yeah. sweat high. Yeah. Because mushrooms are mostly water. So, you know, mushroom flavor and green curry just for me doesn't work. It just does not taste right. You know, it's one of those things. It's supposed to be a certain way and having mushroom stock in there essentially is not going to elevate the product like i mentioned earlier and that can suck up some of the lovely fat that's coming out of that chicken as well these little delicate mushrooms here i'll put those in just at the end no don't put it in now we've got some nice color on the chicken See, he's going for color and the mushroom i'm now going to go in with a paste delicious no, no. it's 
It's not a paste. It looks like it looks like almost like a slaw. <laughs> Visually, it kind of looks like a slaw. It's just there's no shrimp paste in there. That's a huge part of curry uh, curry paste. So you're missing a big part of the flavor profile and the gall and gall. Um, yeah. No, I no, like no. This. I like this a lot. <laughs> Uncle Roger, so it upset. looks like it, it looks like some kind of bird food or something, man. I just put my leg down from chair. <laughs> this not how you make green curry. Hiya. You don't just whack it in like it's soy sauce. Green curry, you cook the coconut milk, pour the green paste okay, in, cool. and then you boil until Okay, set sweet. Coming. So I, I was I was right. Oil first until it breaks, and then you put in your curry paste. And then you put in your chicken. To surface. Beautiful. You see, you see that glistening? That's the fat separating from the coconut milk solid. And in Western cookery, that's actually an undesirable trait of cooking. Uh, if, if you brought a sauce that looked like that to a Western chef, they would say you fucked it up. But in Eastern cooking, especially something like this, or even like a, a lot of Malaysian and Indonesian dishes, they have a look like this where, again, the, the product had actually broken. That's actually desired. That's what they want. And again, it's not right or wrong. It's just different. And if you want to make it authentic, this is how it's got to look. Green fat, not just throwing random shit in <laughs> pan. And I'm mm. using a coconut milk mm -mm, that's mm -mm. light. Mm -mm. So give that a little shake. Now in with the munch too. Now we know. Munch too? What the now in munch? with the munch too. Oh, I guess they call um, spring peas munch too. You guys, is that what you guys call it? Uh, anyway, I didn't know that. Something new for me. Yeah, putting the coconut milk at the end. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Completely backwards. That's actually how my mom makes her. Thai style curry, which I, I'll never give my mom shit, you know, but whatever my mom feeds me, I will eat. However, that's how she does it. I've kind of like hinted, hey, you should do this or that. She won't fucking listen to me. I eat whatever my mom puts in front of me, no questions asked. But yeah, totally backwards, totally backwards. Uh, sorry, Jamie. Mm. You people in so much. Remember, tree chili. Tree and 200 grams of the worst vegetable ever, munch too. If vegetable tastes like set, Munch too tastes like terror. <laughs> is this what British people think green curry is? Is this what they're eating? Two minutes to cook, so that's kind of your timer now. Of course, you could use any other seasonal greens. Have fun with it. Make it your own. Now, don't make it your own. Make it Thai, <laughs> please. Go in. I mean, if you're saying Thai green curry, you you better make it authentic. That's a lot of mushroom, man. That is going to significantly flavor this. It's. In a, again, in, in a not, I can barely talk right now in a non positive way. Uh, it's just the mushroom stock broth that's spewing out of the curry as you're cooking the mushroom in there. It's imparting flavor that for me just does not work in a Thai green curry. Oh no. I need the fish sauce, go. Fish, fish sauce? sauce? Wrong brand. Everybody okay. buy fish. <laughs> I agree with that. Yes, fish sauce, wrong brand. Always squid, squid brand fish sauce always however there is a brand called sunfish sauce where they do aged fish sauce which is pretty freaking dope again called sunfish sauce maybe i'll leave a link in the description below sauce you buy the squid brand not this bullshit brand. <laughs> <laughs> and it said thai taste on it <laughs> thai taste vegetarian This is just an image he probably pulled from Google, but if Jamie really did use vegetarian fish sauce for Thai green curry, go get fucked. In. One and a half lime. Wrong again, nobody used lime. Basil, Wrong just on the again, top. Thai basil. Just pluck, just pluck, don't slice. Don't remember putting lime juice in the Thai green curry. The paste itself is already gonna be super you know, um, flavorful, and you don't necessarily want acid in your Thai green curry. You get that lime aromas and flavors from the kaffir lime leaf, which is huge, which is key. And nowadays you can order that online pretty easily and it will be delivered anywhere. For the Thai basil, I also agree, no need to chop it up. They in fact just pluck it and throw the leaves whole. And when you throw it into the curry, it wilts down and it mixes in. How many things can he get wrong in one video? <laughs> Hiya. And then we used to use a full Oh just my. scuff up oh. 
Uncle Roger is frowning on Jamie Oliver for using a fork to fluff up the rice. That's actually a very common technique in Western cookery, uh, you know, to fluff the rice a little bit. While you never see that happen in Eastern, uh, you know, in Eastern kitchens, uh, you know, again, this is where the, the gaps, you know, where there are gaps between Asian style cookery and Western cookery. That rice. Because what we want is light. Look at the, oh my God, the rice looks so clumpy and wet. Mm -hmm. Hi. Because he did a two to one ratio, which for long grain rice is too much water. Yeah. <laughs> Here, my friends, is our curry balanced with lime and the seasoning from the fish sauce. Finish it with some herbs. What a wonderful dish. More chilies, guys, more chilies. Oh, so far chili. <laughs> That was my exact... I was literally about to say the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here, my friends, is our curry balanced with lime. Niece and nephew, does this look like Thai green curry to you? Mm -mm. Uncle Roger put on screen. Look at that. Look at that right there. Look at the sh just the sheer difference. Look at the chicken. No color on it. Very common you know, in Asian cookery, you're not necessarily looking for the color. Whole basil leaves. Now this photo of the Thai green curry was definitely specifically made for photographs with some kind of food stylist. Those leaves potentially could not, you know, are potentially not even real. That curry could probably, was probably cold again for the photograph. If it was steaming hot and you put the camera over it, you would fog up the lens, which is not what you want to do. This is clearly curry that was cooked. You can see the Thai, uh, the Thai eggplant is cooked down. It's softened up. The chicken's cooked. You can see that. You can see the coconut oil that had separated from the coconut milk. Uh, and look at that brilliant green color. And look at Jamie's shit. It's lovely to see little pops of color. Thai green curry cooked in the time that it took to cook some basmati rice. Basmati. No, basmati. So basmati is a long grain rice, but regardless, same principle, two to one for a basmati rice is too much, is too much water. Rice, wrong rice. Use Thai jasmine rice for Thai. Yes, use Thai jasmine rice, which is also a long grain rice and same principle, two to one is too much water. I like to go 1.75 to one or even like teetering on 1.5. But again, the real way to do it, finger test. You have to just have to figure out where it comes up to on your finger. Don't be afraid to try this out, especially if you get yourself a rice cooker, which is really cheap right now. Great skill to learn. A bag of rice can last you a long time, super easy to make. What's wonderful about making rice is that if you have a rice cooker and you learn how to make it with the finger test, once you get it down, you've got it down, it's super fast. And while the rice is cooking, you don't have to nurse it. You can work on another dish. By the time you're finished with that dish, the rice is ready. So I urge you guys, learn your rice cookery. It's really a worthwhile skill to have. I promise you, you will not regret it. Is he trying to get Guinness World Record for most fuck up in one <laughs> cooking video? Look at that. So let's have a little go. I'm sorry, Jamie, that, that curry looks like shit. Very good. <laughs> He's so happy with himself. Sort of tropical flavor, like really, really perfect. Tropical Uncle Roger, never hear anyone describe curry as tropical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I think tropical, I'm thinking of like brightly colored, rainbow colored fucking drinks at the Bahamas. Thai is not, it's a tropical region. Green curry don't taste fucking tropical. <sighs> Go eat a banana, Jamie. Of course, you could swap the chicken out for tofu. Go for no, no. Tofu, <laughs> tofu. I see before what you do with tofu. Stay Do's away tofu from tofu. Or... Jamie, stay away from tofu, please. I don't want you to, I don't want to see you handling tofu again. And there you go, guys. Thai green curry, Jamie style. Really, really nice. If you want the recipe, click uh, on the details below. No, thanks. Oh, and if you want a <laughs> cocktail to go with this, then go. Listen, as uh, my grade one out of 10 for Jamie's um, Thai green curry, I'm going to give it a negative 20 million. Not a fan. Steps completely out of place. But really quick. I want you guys to understand, you know, this video is meant for fun and educational purposes. And while uh, clearly Jamie doesn't have a command over Asian cuisine, 
you have to understand who this guy is and the business that he's built and the fact that he is known for cooking and whether you agree with it right or wrong anyone who has a food business is going to want to put their money behind Jamie. I don't know if this is from Jamie's channel or whatever, but regardless, even if it is Jamie's channel, you know, he's a businessman with all these people behind him that need him to generate content. And his audience also has no command over or no, not much knowledge over what proper Asian cookery is. Do I wish that Uncle Roger could be the one um, teaching people these dishes? Absolutely. And you know what? That's why I love his videos so much because he's, through his comedy, he's educating people on what is not Asian food. And yes, he's, you know, kind of taking the piss out of the whole situation. And I'm hoping my videos can add a little bit more education to the whole thing and a bit more about the science of the food because I, I love that stuff. I have so much fun with this. Stick to your Western cookery. Um, I can't wait to see what, what you mess up next. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Please consider becoming a patron. Link in the description below. Patrons get to view the episodes one week early. So definitely consider becoming a patron and it would mean so much to me as all your contributions go right back to this channel. And with that said, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.